Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. We are not in Foundry VTT. We will be, but we're not yet. Um, so we had a bit of a request from uh, Anthony, uh, who has suggested a video for us that I thought would be a good idea, actually, and have a little bit of a break from Curse of Strahd, look at something a little bit different. Um, and in fairness, we have looked at a bunch of these bits before, but not necessarily stitched everything together in one complete journey. So what are we looking at? We're looking at three different things. We are starting off with Donjon's random dun dungeon generator. We're going to have a, a little look at dungeon craft, uh, dungeon draft even. Uh, and then we're going to look at Foundry VTT. So we're going to create a dungeon. We're going to map it all out. Uh, and then we're going to import it into Foundry VTT. Uh, and this is really, really useful if you're kind of stuck for ideas. You want to throw together a dungeon relatively quickly um, and be inspired by something random, which is not a bad thing at all. Um, maybe for a one shot, for example, within a death trap dungeon somewhere for them to escape from. So where are we? We're Don John's. Uh, 5e random dungeon generator so you can google that um, just d-o-n-j-o-n -O -N, donjon um, and you can easily find your way here uh, you can see there's a whole bunch of generators on here for all sorts of different things so there is pathfinder stuff as well um etc etc but we're interested in this 5e and we're on this random dungeon generator i've just restarted the page and it gives us this lovely little thing here so just to walk you through this um it's going to randomly generate a name for us that we can obviously keep or get rid of uh dungeon level this is the level our players are so let's say they're all third level um and we can choose the size of that party so we've got four third level characters because it's going to not just generate the map but encounters as well we can pick a motif so is it abandoned uh is it undead is it vermin? Um, and this is not necessarily going to make much difference to the the map, but it will to the creatures. So uh, let's go with uh, let's go with vermin. Why not? Uh, and we can click random dungeon, and it's going to randomise. You can see here in the preview our dungeon for us. Now we've got a number of things obviously on the left hand side just here uh, that we can adjust for this. So first of all, there is a random seed, uh, which is good because we want it random. Uh, dungeon size. Well, I'm going to pick medium. It's going to bring this right down to something a bit more useful for us. But we can also look at the layout, so we can ask for a square one. This is now square we can ask for it to be a cross cross shape. We can put it in a keep. So we've got effectively four corners. So you can pick something that's going to be relevant to you, a cavernous. Um, I'm going to go with, with box. I quite like box. Um, for this purposes, it's nice and easy, especially when we get to the next stage. Um, peripheral egress. This is basically the number of ways you get in and out. No means... There are no doors or ways into and out of this, which is fine because you might be using teleporters to get in and out. You might want to have stairs going up and down and things like that. But you can absolutely say, yes, please give me a way in. There we go. It's just down the bottom here. You can just see it down there. Uh, you can say, actually, I want many. So there's going to be more than one. There's one at the top right and one top middle there. Um, so you can get in and out of this section of the whatever, the dungeon, the cave, whatever it might be. Uh, so it's really useful you can do that. Now there is also tiling. Uh, tiling means if it puts an entrance on one side, there will be one on the exact opposite side of the map as well. So you can tile these together. Uh, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say no for this purpose. Uh, density of those rooms they can be sparse they can be scattered uh, or you can have it quite dense or you can have it symmetric uh, you might have a very good reason for wanting symmetric you can see that that is exactly the same on either side not where the corridors are but where the rooms are are symmetric because it's a room layout um, I'm going to go with scattered just because why not um, I can now talk about the size of those rooms. Let's make the medium. So obviously medium rooms, you're going to have fewer of them, um, but they're going to be a bit more sizable. Uh, polymorph rooms. So how many sides? So are we allowed um, rooms with more than one side? If we say yes, 
some of these rooms are going to be changed to be hexagonal um, and octagonal and things like that. If we go many, then more of them will be. And we've got some that are circular. Um, we've got a mixture there. So you can decide. It mixes it up a bit, doesn't it? It makes it a little bit more challenging for the decorating side of it. But um, you can choose if that's what you want. I'm going to stick with no. Uh, what about doors? Basic doors? Secure doors? Standard? How do you want them? I'm just going to go with standard doors. Uh, when we talk about corridors, we can talk about whether they're labyrinthine, um, errant, or straight. So straight corridors go from one room to another. Straight line, they don't go all over the place. Um, errant means all over the place, and labyrinthine means it's a bit of a bit a bit squiggly. But again, it's up to you. But that's going to work in conjunction with the dead ends. So if you look at the top left here of this preview map, we've got this weird corridor. It comes out of this room, it goes to a dead end, it squiggles around and goes to another dead end. That's what this remove dead ends is about. So if you say leave it on none, it will leave dead ends in all over the place. Bottom right hand corner, top left, uh, top right corner, top left, bottom left. Blimey, I've lost my left and my right, haven't I? But you know what I mean. Um, and that may be what you want, it might not be. You could say, yeah, I'm going to remove all of them. There are no dead ends here at all anymore. And if it's a kind of a completed structure, that's probably what you want to go for. But you might say, well, I want some because it might be that oh, maybe there's a cave in here. So that corridor is no longer accessible. Um, maybe maybe this corridor here was supposed to go off to another room that's collapsed or they haven't finished digging it out yet, whatever it might be. So you could pick that. Uh, I'm going to go uh, with move all dead ends just because. Excellent. Uh, do I want stairs in? Well, I'm going to say yes. Uh, so it's now put some stairs in just here and some stairs in here. So if you say yes to stairs, it's going to put one lot for coming up and one for going down. Uh, of course, you can switch them around. And of course, you can also select many, which is going to put multiple sets of stairs in there. I'm going to leave it like this. Map style. Now, for what we're going to do, we're going to leave it on standard, but you can select how this map looks um, if you were just using the map for this purpose. Uh, I'm going to leave it on standard because of what we're going to do with it next. But if you just want to use it from here, that's what you can do. Uh, we have a grid here. Grid, we can do hex. We can do square, we can do vertical hexes, or we can do none. Now, traditionally, we would leave that on, on square here, and we'd say, yep, that's what it's going to look like, and we've got all those square things. We can, of course, say none. Now, this is entirely your preference with what you want to do, but I know there's quite a lot of you who really don't like using gridded maps. We use the grid in Foundry VTT, but don't have the grid drawn on the map. Fine, whatever. Um, whichever works for you. So I'm going to say no grid, which is going to make it slightly more difficult to play with in the next step. Um, but hey, we're up for a challenge, right? <laughs> uh, now we've got all of those in and we're kind of happy with this because bearing in mind we can change this random generator number if we want to. Um, that's all great. I'm kind of happy with this. I can click to construct dungeon. Now I'm going to give it a few moments as it does it. Uh, here we go. It's, it's given us the name, the Forsake, Forsaken Tome of Malice. Of course we don't have to use that. Um, but look at all these rooms. They've all got numbers on and things. Okay, uh, And it's given us a key here for the map. Stairs up, stairs down, types of doors, whether they're locked, etc. But every one of these rooms has a number on it. And if we hover over it, so room number 34, it's giving you a little pop-up to tell you what's there. Etacap and four giant wolf spiders. Nice. Uh, and some of the corridors, like this, has an I in it. Someone has scrawled, save yourself, kill the others, here. There's an M here. Falling block. Uh, there's a C over here. Magic missile trap. So not only has it generated the map, it has generated all the content. So let's scroll down a bit. It gives us this history of this dungeon, which we can take or leave. Um, what the walls are like, what the floors are made of, the temperature of this place, what kind of illumination it has. Gives us some information about the corridor here. There's that eye. Someone has scrolled save yourself. Um, so we can see what that is. We've got that falling block there, that magic missile trap, etc. So it's generated these randomly for us. 
uh, it's given us a random wandering monster table, which is great. All based on, we picked, if you remember, oh, it's not up there anymore. Uh, we picked vermin, didn't we? So we've got things like kobolds um, and were rats and, and things like that. Uh, in here as opposed to lots of undead if we'd picked undead or lots of giant type creatures if we'd picked giant uh, so that's really cool that you can theme uh, it from that point of view uh, just by what your options are uh, and then we've got full room descriptions room one tells you that the west entry is an archway we've got a stuck wooden door dc 10 to break it open what is in here we've got some that we've got some monsters we've got treasure and again, all of this is adjustable, but it has generated us a dungeon with all of these rooms in that we might want to use. And that is pretty damn cool, isn't it? And it's completely randomised. So if you're really struggling for inspiration, this is the way to go. Um, if we decided we really don't like this or we want to change it, we can go back to settings, redo something else if we wanted to. Now, for this purpose, we're going to say, yeah, we love this. We're going to go ahead with this. All right. Um, bearing in mind, we can change anything we don't like and, you know, move it out and whatever. We're going to go to download. Now we can download in a number of different ways here. We can download a map which has all of the indicators and everything else on. We can download the player's map. So the dungeon map without its secret doors and labels, etc. Um, print scale, uh, TSV, HTML. We want a PDF, so we're gonna we're gonna click PDF. It's gonna take a second, and it's downloaded me a copy of that PDF. It's 14 pages long. There's my map. Here's all my room descriptions. I mean, how good is that? Now we're going to keep that because we're going to need that later um, when we rebuild the actual room itself. Now if we go back to downloads, um, we can actually download a copy of our map here. Uh, so print scale, a dungeon map upscaled for printing. Um, I think we will probably want that one. And then we can open this one and there we go, we've got an image there. Now it's got all the numbers and stuff on it. Um, so if you're happy with the fact it's got the numbers on it, no problem at all. But we could also, if we wanted to, do a player's map version of that. Um, and there we've got no numbers or anything on it in any way, shape or form. It's completely blank. So for our next step, this is the one that I'm going to be using. Okay, so we're going to switch over to Dungeon Draft now um, and then see what we can do with this next. Okay, so here we are over in Dungeon Draft. Um, nothing in here at all. So we, well, first thing we need to do, of course, is import our new map. Now, there is a step between generating the random dungeon and this bit that might be of interest to you. But I'm going to skip it just for, you know make my life a bit more challenging and you'll see what I mean in a bit right so I'm just going to stick with uh, 64 by 64 uh, and uh, I haven't got any asset packs installed so obviously dungeon draft there's lots of access to asset packs and things like that I haven't got any installed I don't need to worry about it for this purpose but you know you want to make it as beautiful as you can so I have started a completely new map here I can hold down control to zoom that out uh, and here it is, it's just blank, there's nothing in here. What I want to do is I want to bring in that map we have just done. So if I go to settings, I can go to trace image. So in the top left hand here, I went to this icon, go to trace image, uh, and I can open a file. And I am going to be opening that forsaken tome of malice the player version without the numbers on there it is tiny 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 in the middle now this is the bit that's going to drive you nuts um, and this is just about lining this up so it's actually going to fit this grid let me zoom in a bit because each of these squares in dungeon draft is effectively five foot by five foot so if i want my map to match that what I can do, if I drag that over, we can see, I'm looking just here, that corridor is nowhere near wide enough. So I'm gonna to need to keep zooming in here until 
my corridors are about five foot wide. Now this harkens back to um, watching me do terrible, terrible grid referencing in Foundry. Um, <laughs> I don't know how much you guys love me struggling with grids. So you get to watch me do it a bit more in here. So if you choose to do the gridded version um, when you're in the random generator, you will, of course, have a grid on your picture to line up with the grid here. So you might say, hey, why the hell are you doing it this way when it will just produce a grid? Well, you're right. That would be really sensible. Um, but for me, I prefer to have non-gridded images. Uh, so I've just lined this up with the bottom corner here and I can see it's not quite lining up. I need to make my image a bit bigger again. Line that up and we're getting close. That's looking reasonably good. Not quite lining up here. So it doesn't take too long and if it took too long I would stop doing this so that you don't have to watch me. Now the thing you need to be careful of is is when you uh, start moving around every time you do that mouse wheel or you move you hold the left mouse button you're moving your map so uh, that's going to drive you nuts uh, if i hold down control i can scroll out the whole thing scroll back in that fits almost perfectly over there almost perfectly over here that's good a blood enough right so i'm going to come off of that option to stop me messing that up um Come on. Thank you very much. Whee. Do you know what? I'm terrible with these things, aren't I? It's entertainment value. Okay, so we've got our template of our dungeon map in here now, just as we had it before. Um, which is really good. That's what we wanted. But obviously we've got a bit of noise around the outside here. We've got some extra squares we don't need. Well, that's okay because we can sort of trim this down now. Um, so if I go to this trace, uh, sorry, if I go to menu, I can go to change map size. Uh, now I've got one, two, three, four, five, too many at the bottom. So if I wanted to add them on, I could click this add arrow and it's going to add on four tiles. I'm actually going to take off four. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Was it six or seven? Can't count. By doing minus, it's going to trim those down. It should have been seven. So it's trimmed that off nicely. Uh, and I can just do that again. Uh, just to, I want to trim one more off of that side. I'm going to trim four off of that side. Yes, I know what it did. <laughs> uh, and it's because uh, while I've trimmed it, um, give that back. Thank you very much. Uh, because I trimmed it, obviously the map is over to one side. But you get what I mean. You can fiddle around with that um, and sort that out in your own time. You don't want to watch me spending hours doing that. So now we have our map as we want it on there to scale so now it's just a case of using the normal let's go to the build tool we're using the normal dungeon draft um, tools to create our dungeon from what we've got now again i haven't got all those extra asset packs and stuff installed at, the, at this point which is fine so i'm going to choose for example i'm going to choose this type of on the left hand side i'm going to choose the type of wall um, and I'm going to choose the type of floor. Let's go with um, let's go with worn bricks. Uh, and then I'm going to zoom in just to make life a bit easier for you guys to see. And I can select my rooms, and I can just start drawing my rooms here. Uh, and of course, because it's dungeon draft, it's doing the dungeon draft thing of just creating those as I need them, which is brilliant. So we're covering up our template, but it's really easy. We're just following that. So this normal dungeon draft stuff, of course, you don't need the template. You don't need to trace a template. You can just come in and make it yourself, but that can be quite hard on the creativity. And it's like, oh, what room should I put in? Where should I put that? All oh, my rooms look the same and things. So it's nice to have that random generated. And of course, it's got all those encounters. I'm not going to do the whole lot. So I'm going to do that. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to select the same kind of wall. Now, double click, I'm going to put those that in there. Double click, I'm going to put that in there. Um, because these doors, 
on here are halfway between a tile okay so um, I can choose where I want to put my door I'm going to put my door there um, I'm going to select a different door and I'm going to put that there normal dungeon draft tools okay let's not spend too long doing that um, but I can absolutely come in and add on the extra things that I want to go to my object tool I can scroll through whatever objects you've got um, and I can start placing those however I want within my rooms, within my dungeon. If we put a little teddy bear over here in that corner, uh, all my furniture, whatever it might be, I can start placing this in um, anywhere I like. Uh, let's put a harp over here. For, for reasons unknown, it does not matter for this purpose. Random armchair, we'll have a wooden table, um, we'll have another wooden table. Uh, I've missed chairs somewhere. Uh, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'm just going to put a couple, literally put a couple more pieces out. So let's put a, a grate down there um, and whatever the heck some of that stuff is. Come on, find something else a bit more interesting. Random lily pad. No, let's put a crate of food or something, whatever that is. Okay, so we have created this. Of course, we're going to go and complete that through the whole dungeon. Now, bearing in mind that we have a PDF file that has a description of all of these rooms, what the standard walls are like, what the standard floors are like. So you can go through and actually follow that and build this dungeon in according to that randomness, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. So we can go through, we can put all the walls in, put all the furniture and things in again, following that guide, or changing it and making up however we like because of course in foundry a lot of its case of the characters can see that there's a harp there um you know so you're not going to forget that that's a thing now you can also go do do and things like lighting um, we can add lighting into this we're going to add um there we go just make that a bit smaller um we're going to add a light and we're going to pop it in this corner let's let's put it on here randomly for no real reason but imagine we put a torch in there we can pop that in we can uh, let's change this color and make this one a green one and we're going to stick that over there so we can pop lights in and stuff if we want to so once we've completed all that and we are ready we can hit our export and we can say whether we want to export it now do we want grids exporting with it do we want lighting exported with it we can make that choice however we want to do that. I'm going to say no to grids, lighting on for this purpose, uh, which is all good. Now we've got a, a grid PPI and all of that lot. We don't really need to fiddle with it. What we can do though is go export. Thank you very much. It's going to ask us where we want to stick it and give it a name. I'm going to call it test uh, and I'm going to slap it down there. Give it a few moments so you can see it's kind of whizzing through the different layers as it compiles this for us and eventually it will have stopped and i believe it's now completed itself which is great have you finished yes good all right so we can come out of here now and now we can pop over the foundry i'll see you there in just a moment okay so we flipped over to foundry vtt uh, now this is version 12 but uh, it's kind of irrelevant what we do need is we need a mod and this is the universal battle map in porter and this is the only mod i've got in my testing world here um, and it doesn't matter as long as that mod is compatible with whatever version you've got um going on so version 12 obviously there's no reason you're not on version 12 at the moment to be honest there's, there's no <laughs> there's nothing holding you back so if you're not on version 12 um you might want to consider making that jump so universal battle map importer that what we that's what we've got and what enables us to do when we go to our scenes is right at the bottom right in tiny little writing that you probably can't see we have a little button universal battle map importer now we did look at this before um, although it was several months ago and we have grown massively since we did that video so people might not have gone back there all right so what this is going to do this is going to allow us to import files that have been created in a vtt kind of way so i'm going to call this um 
I'm going to call it Aaron, and because of double A, it's going to put it towards the top of my scene list. That's the only reason why. And of course, I can set a path that this is going to upload. Now, this is going to put it in my DM folder of stuff, which is where I used to dump lots of junky bits. Um, doesn't matter. For this purpose, it really doesn't matter for me, but you want to put it where you need it to be. And I'm going to choose my file here, uh, and I saved it as test. Very conveniently, it's right there for me, my test uh, and I can tell it's a DD2VTT file type, and I can just open. Uh, so that has now got that written here for us. And now you can see I can change the quality and, and all sorts of little bits here if I want to. I'm just going to do a straight import, and that's going to take a few moments to do that. And, but what that's doing is that those layers that Dungeon Draft was kind of saving, all those different layers, that's what this is doing. It's importing them all. And while I'm talking, in the top right-hand corner, we now have a new scene called Aaron. And if I scroll out, remember, we had all of that map. It's not bought in that map, but what we did do is we traced over it. And when we traced over it, this is the only bits that we actually built. But we could have, if we had forever, <laughs> which we haven't. Some of these videos are long enough as it is. Uh, it's only bought in the bits that we did. But this is now perfectly aligned to the grid. Um, and we've got all of that in there. Now, of course, we can do our usual stuff of come in here. We can uh, make our grid transparent. Remember, I didn't export the grid, so it's not part of my picture. So I can get rid of that now if I want to. Uh, and I can do all my vision and everything else I would normally do with a scene. But it's brought this in complete with the images and stuff. And look, looky, looky, it's brought in the doors and things for us just as we wanted to because we placed the doors in Dungeon Draft. Now it's also given us our lights here. Let's have a quick look through our menu at the top. If we go to tiles, there's no tiles. These items are not tiles. They are part of the drawn map. Uh, if we go to walls, it has drawn all of our walls for us. No walling up in this video because Dungeon Draft has done it. So exporting it as that VTT type, Dungeon Draft has drawn all of our walls in as you can see that those doors are marked as doors. And if we go to lights, it has brought our lights in from Dungeon Draft for us as well. Now, of course, we can adjust those lights, we can add more, etc. So it's a really nice way of doing it. Let's uh, let's pick a random, uh, pick a bandit. We can slap this bandit out and they can move around. There we go. The walls all work. Can't go through that door unless I click it, etc. So it all works perfectly well. So stitch in those three things together yeah of course it's going to take time but even if you were doing it the old way with pen and paper for those of you old enough to remember such a thing <laughs> these things do take time but we can randomly create that dungeon um, with all of the room descriptions i can now if i wanted to i can now go through and create journal entries and put my figures down um, you know so i know what they all are or i've got that pdf that PDF we looked at, it's got all the room descriptions. As long as I know which room is which, and that PDF contains a copy of the map as well, I've got my adventure ready to go. Now, I'm not promising that those random generated encounters are going to be brilliant in all cases. Um, I would strongly suggest that you edit those quite strongly, go through, does it make sense? Otherwise, you, you're going to end up with pretty much a, a hack and slash kind of dungeon. But that might be what you'll want to use this for. That might be exactly it. Maybe you want something down and dirty just to throw at your players to burn off a bit of steam and to hack their way through stuff. Um, and of course, we can, based on the description in that in that um, in that adventure, we can slap all of our monsters out that it requires uh, in Foundry VTT, knowing that that's going to work the way we want it to. So that's it for this video. Uh, so once again, um, thank you for Anthony for the suggestion of this one. A uh, bit of a break from doing Curse of Strahd stuff, so it's quite nice to see something, you know, do something slightly different. And, and again, use the random generator to generate ideas for your dungeon. You don't have to use its map. You can use its map however you want. Um, you can stick it into Dungeon Draft so that you can draw your map out and add the pretty pictures and stuff, but you don't have to do that. 
Um, I mean, you you know, whatever works for you is really good. Uh, it's just a nice way to randomly generate an adventure, then stick a map, and then pull it into Foundry VTT, almost ready to go. All the descriptions are there. You've got to chuck the monsters in, um, but your walls are done, your lighting's done, and everything else. Now, of course, you could just say, oh, look, don't bother doing your lighting in Dungeon Draft, because you're going to do it over here anyway. Fine, whatever works for you. Um, <laughs> you know, just uh, just options. So anyway, I hope this has been interesting. I know a lot of you will already have your ways of doing this stuff, um, and some of you won't touch it at all, and you just kind of go, yeah, not for me, whatever. It's just another tool in our armory to help us create more interesting games, especially if we need to do them quite quickly. So thank you for watching. Very much appreciate it. Take care, and I will see you in the next one.